Hello everyone, it's good to see you all back. Have you guys been farming for the exotic class items recently? Because I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos going over the roles you need to get, and funnily enough, I got this specific role that is highly sought after. Spirit of Inmost Light and Spirit of Symphoseps. Shockingly, this role is quite good for those who want more of a jack of all trade build, you know, like the ones we did a while back. So today, that's what I'm going to be giving you, another jack of all trade build that is viable for all endgame content you like, and flexible in terms of items used, and also heavily allow prismatic usage in seconds. Starting with the general aim and exotic for the build, our aim is to make sure our prismatic energy and overall ability energy is kept filled at all times via our exotic. We also need to make sure the weapons and fragments being used will enhance the overall cooldown of the build, so we can still be active with just one ability available. For this, we will be using Solipsium and Microcosm. A start with Solipsium with its two exotic effects, it states, A spell of inmost light, using the ability empowers the other two abilities, granting them improved energy regeneration. A spirit of Symphoseps improves melee damage when you're surrounded. Both of the following spirits in their own exotics have been very popular since the day they were first released, and now having them here allows us to make full use of them even more. While Hoyle is an outright great perk to have, the Symphoseps allows the user to enhance all of their melee abilities for even more damage. This here, if used with Arcane Needles for example, will one-shot most red bar enemies as long as we get the exotic effect to kick in within GMs for example. Now with the two combined, you can achieve some hefty coverage when used in endgame correctly. Our second exotic is Microcosm, with its exotic effect Paracusal Beam, which states, A fire is a beam of connect light, dealing massive bonus damage to shields. A pairing this with Slipsium allows us the freedom to use our abilities and prismatic abilities at full max, as long as we have the following mods to support it. A facet of grace will be needed for the support of kinetic weapons, but outside of that, the following is great to use against champions and bosses when used correctly. For aspects and fragments, we have the following. A feed the void where defeating targets with any ability kills will activate devour. Helion, where activating your class ability, will produce a solar mortar that will lob flame projectiles at distant targets and scorch them. Facet of Sacrifice, where while you have an arc, solar, or void buff, ability finder blows will grant bonus darkness transcendence energy. A facet of hope, where while having the elemental buff, your class ability regenerates faster. A facet of protection, where while surrounded by enemies, you're more resistant to incoming damage. A facet of balance, where rapidly defeating light targets grants melee energy. Rapidly defeating dark targets grants grenade energy. And facet of grace, where defeating targets with your kinetic weapon grants you bonus transcendence energy. As the setup relies on our ability to stay afloat as much as possible, it's best you follow the example as to how to best achieve this. A facet of sacrifice and grace will help build up our transcendent energy via our kinetic weapon kills and abilities and the continuous damage will do, which is important for allowing us to severely enhance Hoil when in prismatic form. A facet of hope will help the most when paired with Devour, and from here we'll get increased grenade energy and health regen that will of course go all the way back to our abilities. A facet of protection is here for allowing us to use Simvaceps a bit more safer and also pocket more easily. And then a facet of balance will of course keep our abilities going from both sides, and is one of the most required fragments to have. For the mods and stats, we have both resilience and discipline marked as our top priority, with recovery and strength also playing a part. Once we have Facet of Hope, Hoyle, and their weapon with Pugilus applied, you really don't need to invest too much into both strength and recovery at all. Tier 4 to 5 is fine to go with, but generally go with what is best for you. Resilience, we have either a tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction. No key mods are needed for this area, as having Devourer will be enough. Discipline, we have Arthur at tier 10 for a 1 minute 1 second cooldown via Storm Grenades. Either Storm or Vortex are both fine to have here, with Storm having the lowest cooldown available. Since Grenades won't play too much of a huge part in a build, considering the exotic being used, you can use the following mods to expand your other current skills that do need to be focused on a bit more. Having Impact Induction times 1 for a 12% grenade buff, Focus and Strike for a 12% class ability buff, Momentum Transfer times 1 for a 12% melee buff, and Distribution for a 4% all ability buff will be suitable for the build. You can have times 2 or times 3 for certain mods as well, but this will ultimately rely down to what you genuinely want and need for your own current version of the build. 
So additional mods which are highly recommended were the following. Connect Siphon for creating orbs of power via Connect Weapons. Powerful Attraction for collecting orbs of power when using our class ability. And Reaper for getting more orbs via class ability usage. Charged Up times 1 for a plus 1 armor stacks we carry. Connect Weapon Surge times 1 for a 10% Connect Weapon buff. Ashes to Assets for Super Energy Regen via Grenades. And lastly, Heavy Finder, Reserves and Scavenger Ammo Mods are highly recommended for the weapons we are currently using. Now, as we have covered our Zotic Heavy Weapon, I would then advise you to pick a Super Weapon for the build. These are all optional, but some also have some benefits towards the builds that I do highly recommend you also follow. For our primary, I have the Smite and Moraine with Firefly and Puglis. Probably one of the best pulse rifles to have right now because of its flexibility perk pool, pulses being anti barrier this season, and most importantly, being quite strong to use in endgame now. Having Puglis will help with garnering melee energy towards arcane needle usage, which overall allows us to gain more energy back for other key abilities we have in hand, and this is something I recommend you follow as well, as this does pay off down the line for you. Of course, any part that generally provides any sort of ability energy is fine to also use. As secondary, we then have the Indeed Kindness with Adagio and Beacon Rounds, a powerful sidearm to use in Endgame. Having this for Endgame specifically is going to make taking on mini bosses to bosses a lot more easier without the need of relying on heavy. This is the role I recommend if you are a purely high damage one to use, but getting with Revolt Shot is also another popular perk that most players would recommend for all. So, what can I say that's not been said before? The following is a great and simple jack of all trades build that anyone can pick up and use and change how they like. It provides survivability, fast ability, and prismatic energy regen, enhanced damage from all sources, and is flexible enough to where the user can adapt to their own playstyle. This build will fall into the same realm as Dawn Chorus and Nesrak Sin utility for users who need a reliable and consistent build to jump on and use. Personally, I already have multiple I can use and rely on depending on the scenario I'm currently in, but the positive of having this on hand means that you don't need to be using specific abilities or elementals to achieve your goal, it's just a straight pick up and use how you like. On top of that, the prismatic energy regeneration we have currently is surprisingly super fast when paired with this sort of build, as I can easily get my prismatic form up and running within one champion who is fully stunned. Such a setup is going to be surprisingly useful in something like raids, PvP, or yeah, even Gambit, if you want to have a specific edge against other players. My only concern with the build is how you have to heavily farm for this sort of role and hope you get lucky with it. With how bad the drops are currently, unless you do the exotic mission again and again, it may take a while to get overall, while on the other side, other players may have gotten already. It's basically 50-50 at this point. Overall, I would say, add this to your build collection if you have this specific role or even something similar to it, and you have been looking for an ideal build to support this setup, it generally won't let you down, and if it does, money back guaranteed. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared, then please leave a comment below, while if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and sub while you're here. The link for the build is located below in the pinned section, and I do advise you to check out my playlist for more. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.